Hello, and welcome to a video on Quadratic Equations Part 3, brought to you by the Answer Series. In this video, we will look at other places in your syllabus where quadratic equations are used. The first example I want to look at says determine the smallest value of n for which the sum of n terms of the series minus 1, plus 1, plus 3, plus 5 will have a value greater than 168. I want you to pause the video, I want you to try this, and then we'll look at it together. So what information do you have? You know that the first term is minus 1. If you look at the difference, you will realize that the difference is 2. They ask you for the sum to be greater than 168. Now you know the formula for the sum of an arithmetic progression is this. So what I do is I substitute. In place of a goes minus 1. In place of d goes 2. And the sum must be greater than 168. Multiply the brackets out and collect like terms. You're dividing by 2, so if I take it to the other side, I do the opposite operation, so I multiply by 2. Multiply your brackets and bring the 336 across and set up a trinomial. You'll notice there's a common factor of 2, so divide every term by 2 and there's your quadratic inequality in this example. Factorize it. Now, we're going to be looking at quadratic inequalities in a few videos' time. So if you're not sure about them, wait until we've done them there. If you are, you know that n plus 12 times n minus 14 must be greater than 0. So if I draw a graph of that, my roots are minus 12 and 14. Where is this quadratic graph, my parabola, where is it greater than zero? There and there. So n must be less than minus 12, or n must be greater than 14. Now n is the number of terms. n has to be a natural number. n can only be 1, 2, 3, 4, etc., etc. And they ask you for the smallest value of n. I can't have values less than minus 12. So n has got to be greater than 14. And what is the smallest natural number greater than 14? n must be equal to 15. My second example says determine the coordinates of the points of intersection of a hyperbola and a straight line. So this is now a question in functions. I want you to pause the video. I want you to try this and then we'll look at it together. How do you find where two graphs cut each other? Well, you make the equations equal. You have an equation with fractions, so multiply by the common denominator. So multiply every term by x plus 2. Multiply the brackets and set up your quadratic equation. Again, notice there's a common factor of 2. So I divide every term by 2 factorize. Either x plus 3 is 0, so I get x is minus 3, or x minus 2 is 0, so I get that x is 2. The question asked you for the coordinates. So what I need to do is, now that I know what x is, I need to substitute either into f of x or into g of x. It's much easier to substitute into g of x, so in place of x goes minus 3, and I get my coordinate. In place of x goes 2, and I get my coordinate. So there's an example of quadratic equations being used in functions. 7.3 says determine the x-coordinates of the turning points of a cubic graph. I want you to pause the video, I want you to try this one, and then we'll look at it together. So what do you know about the coordinates of turning points? Well, you know that the gradient at a turning point is zero. This looks like that. At the turning points, the gradient is zero. Well, how do you get the gradient 
you get the derivative. And you make the derivative equal to zero. If you're not sure about cubic graphs or derivatives, watch the videos on calculus and then you'll be able to do this question. So I get the derivative of f of x and I make it equal to zero. That is now a quadratic equation. So factorize the trinomial and you get two x values and they only asked you for the x coordinates so I stop there because I've got the two x values at the turning points. So there's a quadratic equation being used in calculus. The last example I want to do, it says determine the y-intercepts of this graph. What kind of graph is this? It's a circle graph. In other words, what section of work is this? It's analytical geometry. It's paper two. So here again, we're going to find quadratic equations in a different part of your syllabus. Pause the video, try this one, and then we'll look at it together. What do you know about the y-intercepts of a graph? Well, at a y-intercept, you know that x is equal to zero. So I make x equal to zero. And then I can do this in two ways. Either I can say zero plus three, all squared is 9, take it across to the other side and I get 25 minus 9 is 16. Take the square root on both sides, be very very careful because when you do, do not forget you need plus minus 4. So y is equal to 1 plus 4 or y is equal to 1 minus 4. Alternatively, make x 0 Multiply all your brackets out, set up the quadratic equation, factorize, and there are your two answers. In this video, we looked at where you would find quadratic equations in other parts of your syllabus. Thank you for watching this video, brought to you by the Answer Series. Check out the video description below for practice questions from our study guides. If you found this video useful, give it a like and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss any new episodes. Follow us on Instagram or Facebook to stay on top of the latest TAS news and launches. So that's it for now from The Answer Series, your key to exam success.